All right, let's go. All right, all right, let's talk about the Leafs. Tim, 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 they outshot, I know everybody's down on them, but they outshot the team, what was it, 40? 36 to 24. 36 to 24, that's pretty good, walking right in to Boston and out shooting them. So what, what are you saying with that, though? Are you saying that the problem might be the goalie then? Is yeah, that I, the... I would say it's the goaltender. So would you think about switching if you were the coach or I not? Know. I don't know. I don't get paid for that anymore. You don't, get, you don't make those decisions <laughs> no, anymore. No, I, 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 I would leave him in there. He, 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 doesn't, he doesn't have two bad games in a row. No? No. Man. The Leafs have been like, they've given up 27 goals in their last six games. Yeah. Well, yeah, but there were teams that didn't really matter. Yeah, and they were kind of like trying to get Matthews the, yeah, they, they, his goals and all you that. Know, you know what bothers me? There was such a focus on uh, Matthews getting 70 goals. I, I might have thrown them off a little. I just, but I, was, when, you can, when you can walk into Boston and out shoot Boston in Boston, you know you're playing pretty good. Yeah, like we were saying last night. At the end of the game, if you went to with to Keith at the start of the game and said, "If you would you be happy in the first game of the of the playoffs, <laughs> you'd outshoot the Bruins 36-24. And you'd probably say, "Yeah, I'd really be happy." <laughs> yeah, but you'd lose five one though. Yeah, yeah, but what about all the goal posts being hit? Not yeah, they, yeah. They, I mean, the goal, the 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 no, score. Great. How many goal posts were hit last night? Well, the Bruins hit at least four. Yeah, and I think the Leafs hit two. Yeah. I uh, well, anyhow. Anyhow, I'm looking forward to the Leafs come bouncing back and, well, not bouncing back. Uh, well, when, it's se- when it's all they're going to do, like you said, they either have to get a split, and if they don't get a split, well, then they won there too, then you got to use, use their. You, you got to get, you got to win one game in Boston. And that was a, that, that was a, that was a big game. So you, you were kind of, we asked you, Dad, throughout the season, did you think Matthew was going to get 70? And you kind of said, he'll get close, but he won't get it. And you were, you were <laughs> right by one well, goal. You well, called it. Well, when you get 70, you know, you get 69 goals. I mean, you get, you're pretty close. Right. And then he'll get 52 next year. They'll say, gee, he had a bad yeah. year. <laughs> You'd be like Phil. Like, like Phil said, I he's, I got seventy six goals and then I got sixty seven goals or something. Like, you really had a bad year last year. You had a bad year, sixty seven goals. Yeah, he went from seventy two to sixty three. Yeah, something, something year, like that. Had a bad year. But you were saying that you even though the the Bruins won five one, you, you don't think they played that well, did they? I don't think the Bruins played that good. I, I, if, if I if I was that coach. I I don't think he, they played that good. I really don't. I don't think the Bruins played to their potential, and I don't think. Uh, and I thought the Leafs played to their potential. Euler Mike has a question from X, and he says, "Grapes in the last game of the season between the Oilers and the Avs, the Oilers didn't dress their stars, and the Avs had a full lineup. Which do you think is better, sitting star players or playing a full team?" And by the way, the Avs won five one. I always had, even John Mattel, uh, we, for, I, well, I don't know, how old was John Mattel? In his 30s, anyhow. Late 30s, yeah. Yeah. I always had them come down, fix their sticks, get out, and I never broke their routine. And uh, evidently it was pretty good in the playoffs. Uh, I never broke their routine. They fix their sticks, they get to the, have, their, have their breakfast in the morning, and have their steak in the afternoon. And I, so I never, I always dressed, uh, and you know what, I hate to think of it this way, but I used to think of it, if, if, I, if I had brought you to see uh, Rattel and uh, Park and guys like that, and they didn't dress, I would be ticked off. Right. I mean, can you imagine, like, if, if, if the Avalanche do, Sydney, what, what the Leafs do, like, the, they, the prices go with the team they play. That's so, right. So the Oilers would have been the top price because you want to yeah. see mcdavid and dry settle so you they, you know you play top money and then they don't dress those guys just for the sake of not dressing them jesus yeah. i would be oh boy I'd be uh, that would tick me off yeah i would tick me off well we'll, we'll see how it works uh well, although, we'll see how yeah the, <laughs> the oilers well you get if they get that many shots again yeah and it was funny you talk about shots 
the Islanders lost to the Hurricanes last night or yesterday and, afternoon, and they outshot them. So the yeah. two visiting teams significantly outshot the home team and lost. Yeah. The guys that count the shots uh, are, are from the home team, uh, usually. Uh, yeah. Usually. Because they don't want that to be shown, as we all know. They sort of <laughs> flub on I couldn't those. even find them, the shots in the, in the paper today. No, they don't. They have all these analytics, but they don't have the shots on net. <laughs> yeah, good, good. Or I, I didn't see it anyhow. Dad, Sydney playoffs are here, and there's never been a better time to bet on your favorite Canadian team with your favorite Canadian sport book, NorthStarBets.com. They're proudly Canadian and one of the best places to play in Canada. North Star Bet says everything you're looking for, a sports book with built-in insight and analysis, slots, live dealer tables, and exceptional customer service. So get into the playoffs now at NorthStarBets.com, and it's not available in Ontario. Okay, Dad, as we know, the playoffs have started, and uh, we, we want your predictions and all that. So let's start what I think is going to be the hardest to, uh, to pre- do predict, Avalanche well, and uh, Winnip- Winnipeg. Well, I, I, I hate to do this to the Winnipeg fans because they're, they're the best fans in the world as far as I'm concerned. And I will pick the Avalanche on that one. I'm sorry to say I have to pick the Avalanche on that one. And uh, it be interesting to, to watch, though. Uh, the, the, yeah, here's here's the thing I don't get, like with betting. Okay, so the Avalanche are favored pretty significantly, or they're, they're they're favored to win. But the Jets have more wins, more points. Yeah, they haven't lost to them all season. The last time they played, they hammered them seven nothing. So why would they be? Why why you why you're asking me, uh, McKinnon? I think he'll really turn it on. I really do. I yeah. really. So it's almost like McKinnon versus Hellebuck. Yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I never thought of that. Okay, Dad, I'll give you an easy one: Canucks versus Predators. Who's going to win? Well, I, I, I Canucks, and and I pick t- talking. Did I ever tell you this story? I well, I, if I didn't tell you the story, I'm going to tell you again. I like the uh, uh, Canucks in this one, and uh, and I'll tell you about Talkit. What kind of a guy he is? I mean, this he was a tough he was a tough cookie. Remember that. Remember him and... Uh, yeah, Marty McSorley almost got into a fight in the Grapevine Bar <laughs> during, what, the, during the show. What, what, what was that? Well, what happened was we were interviewing... Uh, uh, we did two shows a night at the bar in, in Hamilton on the Grapevine shows. And so Marty McSorley and Rick Tockett were there. And Marty McSorley... We did Rick Tockett first. Yeah. So you were sitting and Marty McSorley was in the crowd. And he was sitting up front. You were, we were getting ready and Tommy Knight was putting on your microphone and everything. And, and you leaned over to talk it and you said, have you and Marty ever gone? Uh, and, 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 and he was looking. And talk it said, no, we have brownies, Dave Brown, to yeah. take care of him. And Marty goes, what? What was that? What was that? <laughs> and so show's over so i take them in the back into the kitchen just to kind of get them away and yeah, explain yeah. what's going on and they're just staring daggers at each other and and, and they were going at each other well i think i i remember yeah because he talk it said talk it said something to the effect of you know you know marty he says i played like three years against you i've never seen you in your never seen you in my face yeah and I think Marty said, he goes, well, I haven't seen you in mine. Well, you have an anchor tied to your ass. <laughs> and they were, they could just, and then they caught themselves and yeah. they left and yeah. they went outside. So I don't well, know. I should look in to see if they ever fought. Yeah. Yeah, you see, see if you got that. Uh, I'll look it up on hockeyfights.com. They, ha- they have that. So but Anyhow, I'm picking the Canucks on that one. And uh, I'll tell you what kind of a guy talk it is. You put half the team in the one corner and half the team in the other corner, and you pass the puck to the guy at the blue line, and then he hits you with the, and then you go in and score. Anyhow, that, that, that's, that's, that's the, the drill. That's the drill. And um, he was making, and I, you know, I, I think it was, um, and um, and it was Jagger. They was making fun of the guy. He, he was just fooling around. And Tockett says, hey, look, you're getting paid big dog. Yeah, he, the guy was making, Jagger was making fun of the penner. He just not making any money. Yeah, he, he wasn't making much money. He says, I want you to cut it out. And and he went down and he went out down the other end and he and he started again and he knocked the guy cold. <laughs> you know who it was? It was Jagger. I mean, you knocked Jagger cold. Well, I don't know if he was cold or not, but he he, he nailed him pretty good. Yeah. Anyhow, I, I can't believe that Tockett would lose. 
Okay, Dad, next one, Edmonton and L.A. Well, I hope you I'm, say the Canadian team, please. No. Oh, you know, I, I am picking Edmonton on oh, this good. one. They have an ax to grind. Uh, they get put out pretty pretty easy. Anyhow, I'll pick the uh, Edmonton on that one. Yeah, it, was, it, it pretty was amazing that they are where they are. Because remember the, at the beginning of the season, yeah. they were 7-13. and 13. Like they, like everybody was saying, "What's going on?" And McDavid wasn't scoring, yeah. and, and he switched the coaches. And uh, you know, one thing that I was just kind of looking at the stats. You know who has the most points against the uh, Oilers this year for LA? It's Quinton Byfield. Remember? Yeah, oh, I'm, we went out to uh, St. Andrews College, was it? Yeah, to see him play. Yeah, and boy, boy, were they steep. Remember, remember the, how steep that? Yeah, oh. St. Andrews College was. It's like a prep school in uh, Toronto here, and it's like something right out of like an eighties teen movie like you can't believe how nice it and is remember the rocks the, the oh. <laughs> rocks were all i couldn't get over the rocks they're all painted white white and it just there wasn't a blade so we it was a beautiful rink one yeah. of the nicest rinks that yeah, we would in. in fact it was the nicest rink we were ever in yeah so we were watching quentin byfield and he was we were kind of uh, i don't yeah he was kind of like he was he was, was pretty was good pretty good and then Third period. I don't know if somebody told them that you were out there, but the third period. <laughs> Holy <laughs> dying. Remember you got down that side? The, the he left let side? a shot go. Like, I swear it moved the net, like the, <laughs> lifted the net right up off the off the pegs. So you're saying it's a prep school. So who did they play against that that uh, the competition would be there and for you to even scout them? Like I'm a little confused how that worked. They would have played like other prep schools and other schools. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. So... He was just so a you know exceptional player. He was a big guy too. Yeah, he, he was, was really big. So he doesn't look too big though on, on uh, Kings though. He no, did. no, but he's but surprisingly like you know you don't. That's unfortunate. Like he goes to L.A. and you don't hear about him anymore, right? Yeah, <laughs> you he hate, does. To, hate to say it. Yeah, a, a Byfield. Who? Who are you talking about? Yeah. So he but he got to, he's from the Toronto area and he he had six points against the Oilers this year. So so you're picking the Oilers. Picking the Oilers, yep. And um, so, speaking of McDavid, Dad Brian ninety nine, so it must be a Gretzky fan, says, "Hey, Coach, if you were Jim Hiller, who's the Kings' coach, in case you don't know, how would you try to check Connor McDavid in the playoffs?" I remember they tried to do that with Bobby one time. Bobby just stood there, he just stood at the blue line. The guy stood beside him. So, wouldn't that be hard to check a defenseman? Well, I don't, <laughs> I don't know how they'd ever check a defenseman, but they did, they tried to anyhow. And Bobby just stood at the blue line. I don't so, know how so, you check. Uh, I don't know how you check McDavid. If you're a coach, like you never, you never kind of, like except for Gee, like you had Marcotte on Gee, but yeah. he didn't tell the other guys. No, boy, I, that Gee was really something. Boy, he could. He, I remember one time, th- th- this actually happened. I, I thought he reached behind. And he touched the puck with his with his left hand, and the puck come between his legs and landed right on his stick. Boy, he was something. He he was something that Guy Lafleur. Okay, Dad. Here's another question from Betty Blue and White on from uh, Facebook, and she wants to know when you're not watching hockey on TV, what do you watch, and what is your favorite movie and book? Well, our favorite movie that we watch over and over and over and over again is Tombstone. Right. But my favorite movie is uh, Lawrence of Arabia. That's my favorite movie. So, but when you're not watching Tombstone on TV, what are you watching on TV? And you're not watching hockey. I can't think of any. You only watch hockey. I only watch hockey. No, I, keep I thought you were big on the History Channel. <laughs> no, I only go... I only uh, watch hockey as much as I can. And the Blue Jays. Oh, Blue Jays. I am a Blue Jay fan from a word go. But That's amazing I, that you can go from hockey to baseball. Oh, I mean, baseball to me is so boring. Well, and not me. I, I watch it right till the very end. I, th- I think that if they're losing 8 uh, nothing, I still think they're going to win. <laughs> what do you think of the new behind the plate? I, I just think it looks awful. Like, like, if you haven't seen it, they, they, they've done quarter of a billion dollar re. I don't care what they did. But I just don't. Uh, I, I'm glad they changed the back of that. Yeah, I don't. I think it looks awful, though. It looks like some tacked up fake well, brick the, wall in the back. I mean, it just. Anyway. It looks sort of amateurish. They, they, it does. It looks it like they. It's really amateurish. No, they, they have that there in the Yankee Stadium, and that's not too bad. No, Yankee Stadium. You, you have the fans in the back that yeah, go right back see- up. Well, I still, I still think they look like the. the speaking, the, speaking of the Yankees, I just 
I was gone. I was on vacation for a bit. My wife and I went to we went to China for a while. You cannot believe everybody wearing New York Yankee stuff. Is that right? Yeah. Like like I would say I must have saw people with Yankee hats or Yankee sweaters. I, I bet you I, I saw at least two or three dozen a, a day walking no around. Kidding. And I mean not in like downtown Shanghai, which is better. like we were way out in the boonies. And walk around like, oh, what is this with the New York Yankee stuff? I, you know, walk up and say, name two New York Yankees. They well, New York, it is. It's they're the evil empire, right? Yeah. Everybody, everybody likes the New and, York, Yankees. and everybody likes the evil empire. Okay. And okay, Dad. And what book? What's your favorite book that you've read? Mm. And you read a lot. You know, a lot. Well, my favorite book was Lawrence of Arabia again, uh, Seven Pillars of Wisdom. Oh, there was a book? Is that what you're supposed to say yeah. before a movie? I, I try to read that book, Dad. No, oh. you have to you have to get <laughs> that, through it's like a textbook. It's thick. It it's, is, it, well, it's just he goes into I know we're getting off topic here, people, but like he'll go five, six pages describing the sand yeah. in, in the desert. Well he does that on purpose. And what what purpose would that be? He wants to know if you're serious about reading. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> yeah, if you can hang reading, in if for you seven can, pages. If you can hang in for about four or five uh, chapters of, of that book. Oh. He, uh, yeah, and the he, movie he, was an epic, too. How long was the friggin' movie was for? Three, uh, three and a half. Three, four three and a half. You brought it to me. I was, what, hey six yo, years old. It's a beautiful Lawrence of Arabia. If, and well, I'm sure you've all seen it. And, and it's beautiful. Book and and movie. But remember that we went to uh, London, and we went into the British War Museum. Oh yeah. And we were walking around, and uh, I told the story once before, but I'll tell it again. So we're going to go to the British. We're in London, England, and we're going to go to the British War Museum. So so I'm going to meet Dad down at the lobby, and I'm dressed nice but casual, like business casual, right? I got and I got comfortable shoes on, and you came down the whole nine yards yeah. with your patent leather shoes. I said, Dad. I said, you know, I, I said, we're going to be, I know you, you're going to be in this museum. We're going to be there eight hours today. And you, I said, why don't you go up and like relax? Nobody, and you go, well, somebody, you know, see, I said, dad, you're in England. Nobody's going to notice you. And he, no, I'm going to get dressed. I says, dad, I said, your feet are going to be hurting. You're going to want to go. Why don't you go up? So we get into this kind of argument in the hall. So we're waiting to get a cab to go to the museum and a, one of the big black cabs pull up. And the guy gets out. He goes, hey, Don Cherry, guess where I'm from? Wolf Island. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I turned to you and I said, you see, Tim? See, yeah, that's true. And then we went to the, Brit we went to the British War Museum. And, you know, kind of looking. You got two of your favorites, Nelson and uh, T.E. E. Lawrence. Well, they had a big thing on Nelson. Big thing on Nelson. But we couldn't find anything on T.E. Lawrence, which may be one of their greatest yeah, you, know, you know, minds in military. And then we turned the corner, and it had just a small little yeah, display. small thing, and it had the rifle. And I knew all about the rifle. Had, you know, it was, it was King was Faisal like, gave him, yeah. And, and uh, anyhow, I couldn't believe it. I'm looking at the rifle there, and, no, and nobody else was looking at it. I guess uh, time so, changes. Yeah, but, you're, but you... you the next museum we went to, you wore better shoes. About better shoes. Oh, my feet were killing me. You wouldn't say a word, I'm sure. Oh, my feet were killing me. <laughs>